want to welcome all of you who have joined us for this time of worship. Welcome to the worship channel of the First Presbyterian Church in Cole Valley and the Beulah Presbyterian Church of Oregon. We hope that you will find meaning in these opportunities to gather in worship, even though we are apart. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we join our hearts together by the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know grace and mercy and forgiveness and peace, that we might also know the good news that Christ is risen, and that resurrection might fuel our lives with every step of faith that we take. Help us to be grateful servants in your holy and dear name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join and sing the hymn number 118, The Day of Resurrection. Amazed at what had happened. 
Here ends this blessed reading that comes today from the Gospel of Luke. Being the humans, 
said they were, but they didn't get it right away. We expected that. After all, it isn't every day a messenger from God speaks to such fleshly beings. So we reminded them that Jesus had told them that this would happen. They were still terrified of our radiance, and so our words didn't sink in right away. So we said, remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Well, at that moment, God calmed them down enough so that they could remember the words of love that Jesus had spoken to them. We could see it in their faces that they had understood the message that we had been sent to proclaim to them. He has risen. Suddenly, their tears changed from tears of sorrow to tears of joy. Their spirit of hopelessness changed to a spirit of hopefulness. The darkness of the cross had been transformed into the light of this empty tomb. It was no longer occupied. There was joy for them, and there was joy for us on that day. The mission that God had sent us to accomplish had been accomplished. We have made these women believe that Christ is risen. But our work was not complete. I am a messenger of God. My purpose is to shine the light of Jesus' risen presence wherever the darkness of sin has clouded the good news of Jesus' resurrection. I am a messenger of God, and I am called to proclaim this message of glory to your world, too. In recent weeks, I understand that you have shared this same story about Jesus' resurrection. I and my associate shared that story with the very first witnesses to the resurrection. I know that you shared it in your worship, and you joined together your hearts, celebrating this good news that Christ is risen. Today, God wants me to ask you the very same question that we asked those women at the open tomb. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Why do you look for the light of God in the things of this world? Why do you live life as though you don't quite believe that the tomb was really empty? Why does your way of life look kind of like the disciples' lives when they did not fully understand that Jesus Christ had risen. Sometimes you don't live your lives as though you understand that the grave could not contain Jesus' love. The darkness of the tomb could not snuff out the glory of God intended to shine in the world in every generation, including yours. He has risen in your world and for your world, too. Mary and her friends, along with Jesus' followers, heard Jesus say that he would rise again over and over and over. But because it sounded too good to believe, they lived in the hopelessness of this world rather than the light of my message, which changes that hopelessness into hope above all hope, that darkness into light. My light, well, God's light, is a light that shines a new luster on every single day that you live. You remember, I told you that I am a messenger of God. God has sent me 
here today to remind you that you are messengers of God too. You and all of your comrades are messengers of God. Just like me and my associate at the empty tomb. Okay, maybe not just like us. You don't glow or anything like that. Your clothes are not as white as snow. But you could glow. You could glow if you embrace the risen presence of Jesus every day. If you embrace the risen presence of Jesus, which all of you say that you're celebrating, you could glow with a light almost as bright as mine. Because you are messengers that God has sent into your world. Let my heavenly light, well, God's heavenly light, show you the wonderful gift that Jesus gave to you. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. That spirit is for you. His spirit, the Holy Spirit, changes a life that is empty into a life that is full, full of grace and love and mercy and forgiveness. That empty tomb, most of all, changes your life into a life that lives every day, understanding that Christ is risen. Every day that you live is flavored by that good news, by the truth that Christ is risen, and that God's kingdom belongs to each one of you. The blood that Jesus shed has cleansed you for all eternity. His blood shed for you has washed you white as snow. Hey, I guess you really are white as snow. I was God's messenger back then. God has sent me, and God sent me then to bring peace to the hearts of the women that gathered at the empty tomb. You are the messengers that God has sent in your time to bring light and peace into the world that surrounds you. Look around today and see if you don't see the radiance of my presence. Listen now and hear the message that God wants to make sure that you hear and to make sure that you proclaim to your world. Listen and see if you don't hear the radiance in this song, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name.
bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the blessing of your word that comes before us, so that we might see the light and proclaim the light to the world around us, that we might live in the hope, even where there is darkness, that we might live in the hope that Christ is risen and that Christ delivers each one of us into God's kingdom of glory, a kingdom of glory that shines light in every dark place of the world. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I got a couple jokes for you today. Why couldn't Jonah trust the ocean? He just knew there was something fishy about it. What kind of man was Boaz before he married Ruth? Absolutely ruthless. The good Lord didn't create anything without a purpose. But we're still trying to figure out the purpose of mosquitoes. Let's make our hearts ready now for the time that we spend in prayer. A couple of things that I want to call to your attention. First, in uh, the community of Cove Valley, I'm going to keep uh, Megan Mulholland, who was in a car accident, I believe, yesterday. She's okay, but but uh, uh, let's uh, we keep her in our prayers that uh, she recovers from a traumatic experience. Susan Strokes, who is uh, uh, Chris Rue's sister, uh, uh, is having some troubles, uh, some some troubles with uh, her kidneys, I understand, so let's keep her in our prayers. Uh, Ken Bridgeford underwent uh, surgery uh, to remove a tumor near her brain. Uh, the surgery was successful, and they looked for her to, to uh, have a, a successful recovery, but let's keep her in our prayers. Uh, we want to keep Dale Barrett in our prayers, who uh, is uh, failing and, and uh, Will soon go home with the Lord. Uh, Harry Fink, uh, Jerry Stocksdale, Sandy Carraway, uh, Trish Dudak, Pat Blazer, uh, Deanne Sherlock, Tracy Tucker, Jeff Sweetland, Sandy Miller, and Sam Waldron. And then we want to keep all of those who are shut in and those who are affected by the coronavirus, that all those who are maybe perhaps laid off or or, or or have been affected, infected with the disease. Just watch over us all as we make it through this difficult time. Now, at Beulah, we want to keep Ed Peterson's nephew, Stephen Taylor. He's been deployed in the military in Kuwait. Uh, Chris White's stepfather, Jerry, uh, he has been infected with the COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, also, Robert DeVries, Clint Dykoff, Carolyn Jessen, and Addison Kelly, Terry Custer, Gary Lovestead, Dylan Preston, Jackie Williams, and Pastor Clint from the Community Church uh, in Cable. Uh, all those serving in the military, uh, our missionaries who serve faithfully even in this difficult time, those of our congregation shut in, Eleanor Garrison and Doris Kennedy, Grace Day and Harriet Strandgard. We want to keep our community in our prayers as well as we all cope with the difficult time. Just that those who have health problems other than COVID as they try to negotiate the health care system, let's just uh, pray for peace among uh, the darkness in our world. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the blessing of your love. And we ask that you would be within the ministry and the program of each of our congregations, that we all might know the blessing of your peace in a difficult time. We ask that you'd be with uh, Stephen Taylor, deployed in uh, Kuwait, uh, with Jerry, who ha has been infected with the coronavirus, uh, and with all of those that are on the Beulah prayer list, Robert DeVries, Clint Dykoff, Carolyn Jessen, Addison Kelly, Terry Custer, Gary Lovestead, uh, Dylan Preston, and Jackie Williams, and all those who are shut in, and, and missionaries in our community, just hold all of these folks up in the palm of your hand, that we might uh, 
be prayerful for all these needs, but you know what the needs are more than we do, Lord, and you are uh, uh, faithful to attend to each one. And in the Coal Valley community, Lord, just watch over uh, Megan Mulholland as she recovers from the car accidents that she was in. We praise you that she wasn't hurt uh, seriously, but we ask that you watch over her in the days that come. We ask that you be with Susan Stropes as she uh, deals with uh, the, the medical problems that she has in the context of all of the hospitalizations that uh, resulted from the coronavirus. We ask that you be with Kim. She faces the same barriers of being hospitalized within uh, the uh, isolation and, and uh, the, the difficulties of of hospital and the, the danger of infection. Lord, just watch over these who need to be in the hospital for other reasons and who are in the hospital because of the virus as well. Lord, just watch over them. We ask that you be with Dale Merricks and his family that they might come to know peace in this time where, where Dale uh, is coming toward the end of his journey. Just help them to see the light that comes uh, and the peace that comes when we all walk with Jesus Christ. We ask that you be with Harry Fink and Jerry Stocksdale, Sandy Carraway as she ponders uh, what the next step in her treatment might be in spite of the difficulties of uh, getting tests and going to the hospital. Trish Dudek, Pat Blazer, Deanne Sherlock, and Tracy Tucker, Jeff Sweetman, Sandy Miller and Sam Waldron, and, and be with Dr. Ed as well uh, as these uh, needs, you know what they are and you walk with each of these, but we are called to prayer, so help us keep uh, these folks in our prayer, all the people that are shut in in both congregations, and be with the ministry and program of each congregation, that even though uh, business of the church is sort of shut down, that our programs and ministries might continue to affect and witness to the communities around us. Be in our world, Lord, that we might with courage face each day that we might be faithful to the call to stay healthy and to uh, stay home uh, so that uh, this too might pass. Lord, we pray now the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join now, singing hymn number 138, Holy, Holy, Holy.
we come now to the place where we set aside each week uh, to uh, prepare for and dedicate the offerings that we know will come in by faith. So we encourage you uh, to remember that the, the expenses of the church keep on even though we are not able to join in worship. So let's prepare to give in a way that reflects our gratefulness for the way we have been bountifully given to. Amen. 